You just have to think 14 moves ahead, that's all. So this right here is the Xiaomi 12. And it's come to my attention that quite a few people still pronounce the name Xiaomi wrong. This is how you pronounce it. It's Xiao, like Shaolin monk. Xiao Mi. Okay, now we got that out of the way. If you've just picked yourself up a Xiaomi 12, or if you're rocking a device that has Mi UI 13, here are some tips, tricks, and secret settings for you to try out first. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving away a couple of Google Play vouchers to the people that make it all the way to the end. So make sure you stick around for that. Anyway, tip number one. So this one was gonna be the last one, but I like it so much that I've decided to bring it all the way to the front. Go to settings, scroll down to additional settings and go to quick ball. Now turn on quick ball and essentially what this is, if you're wondering, is it's kind of a version of the sidebar, except it's not a bar, it's a ball. And the reason I like it is that it's only got five apps, but they're all within reach of your thumb. So if you're right-handed and you tap the quick ball, those five apps are easily accessible to your thumb. And if you're left-handed, you can drag the ball over to the left-hand side of the screen and you'll notice it kind of disappears into the edge of the display. And you can see that it's just a little line. And that's why I like it more than the sidebar because it's less of a distraction. And check it out, you can customize the shortcuts to whatever you want. I've got YouTube, camera, keep notes, screenshot and clear cache. So that clears the backgrounding and you can drag it up and down on the left-hand side or right-hand side wherever you want it to be. Quick ball. All right, here's tip number two. Definitely do this, this is very useful. Go to settings, go to additional settings, go to gesture shortcuts, and here go to launch Google Assistant. What you can do is switch this on, and now the power button, if you hold it down for half a second, triggers your Google Assistant, even on the lock screen as well. This is very useful. If you hold the button down, you still power off the device like usual. Also in this same menu is something really cool and it's the back tap. So this is very useful. I do recommend only using the triple back tap. So this is when you tap the back of the device to perform an action. Now what I've got this set up as is the calculator. So when I tap the back of the device three times, it opens the calculator no matter what screen I'm on. So home screen right now, one, two, three on the back of the device, opens up the calculator. You can configure this to other actions if you want, but I find this very useful. It's like a secret button on the back of the device. So you see this screen right here on the Xiaomi 12. This is an OLED with 1 billion colors, 120 Hertz, refresh rate, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, 1100 nits, peak brightness, 419 pixels per inch, and Gorilla Glass Victus on the front. This is a luxury screen, and I suggest you make the most of it. If you don't, it would be kind of like having a Tesla without ever trying out the ludicrous speed mode. Light speed too slow. Yes, we're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> Check this out. Go to settings, go to display. I like dark mode. Now I've heard people say they don't like dark mode. You can use light mode if you want, but dark mode will use slightly less power than light mode. And something else you should do if you're gonna use dark mode is go into more dark mode options. You can make the background wallpaper a bit darker so your icons and titles pop a little bit more and you can also adjust the text as well. So I switched both of those on. I recommend that if you're using dark mode, but that's not what I wanna show you. What I wanna show you is this. As standard, it's on auto, so it will choose when to max out at that 120 hertz refresh rate. I personally think if your phone is capable of it, why not? make the most of your phone's capabilities, at least at the beginning anyway. So set it to 120 Hertz so you get the maximum refresh rate on the screen and scale it back later if you need to. And this next one is the interesting one, AI image engine. So if you go into this setting here, all of this is switched off by default and I do recommend you switch it all on. So super resolution is gonna scale up any low quality footage to 1080p or close to 1080p as possible. Definitely switch this on. AI image enhancement. So for photos in your gallery, it will display those photos in the best possible quality on your phone if you switch this on. AI HDR enhancement. So this will improve the dynamic range on video content on your phone. I don't see why you wouldn't wanna switch this on. So definitely switch that on. And then MEMC. So 
If you're watching footage that's been shot in a low frame rate, let's say 24 frames per second, essentially what MEMC will do is add in additional frames in between in an attempt to make the footage appear to be smoother. So you can kind of see it demoed here with this snowboarder. I do recommend switch that on because why not? Now, after switching on all of those features, you're probably thinking this is gonna kill my battery. Well, the good news about this phone in particular, the Xiaomi 12, is you've got a 67 watt charger in the box. Zero to 100 in 39 minutes. Fast wireless charging is also a feature here at 50 watts, zero to 100 in 53 minutes. And the battery size is 4,500 milliamps. That is a big battery for a small phone like this. This only rocking a 1080p display. You shouldn't really worry about battery life. But if you are worried, then scale back some of those settings as and when you start to notice the battery drain. Now, some of you might be disappointed to hear this, but I actually really like Apple's backgrounding format. Xiaomi's backgrounding format is like this. We have the background in a vertical layout with the most recent at the top and the older backgrounding apps at the bottom. I prefer the horizontal layout. This is how you switch it to a horizontal layout, just like an iPhone. So pinch on the home screen, that brings up this page here, hit the settings here, and then go to more. Scroll all the way to the bottom here where it says arrange items in recents. That's what they call backgrounding on Xiaomi phones. They call it recents. Go to this, switch it to horizontal, and there we go. Now when we open backgrounding, everything is left to right with the right being the most recent and the left being the oldest apps. Tip number five. All right, so when it comes to stock MIUI, the app drawer, in my opinion, is just a bit of a mess. Maybe some of you guys that have been used to Xiaomi phones for a long time will be used to it, but for me, I like things to be a bit simpler, easier to use, easier to find apps. And I'll show you what I mean by this. When I open the app drawer here at the top, we have a section here of just randomness. These are apps that the phone thinks I might want to use next. Then we've got all of the apps here. Then we've got tabs across the top with sections with apps in them. Now, I prefer just A to Z with letters down the side so I can find things quickly and search by the bottom. That's how I prefer to use my app drawer. So this is how you switch it to that. Hit the little menu at the top right corner here, turn off app suggestions, go to manage app categories, turn that off, and where it says scroll bar, switch it to A to Z. And something else that I like to do here as well, which is just a little tweak, but I think is really cool, you can actually customize how transparent the background of the app drawer is. So I've got it at 50%, so I can still see some of my wallpaper behind the app drawer. You can customize this as much as you want, but around 50%, Looks pretty cool in my opinion. So there we go, A to Z, any apps that I need to find, I can find them quickly just by scrolling down that list to wherever I want, or I can key in the name of the app and go straight to the app that way as well. And here's a little trick that I like that's kind of hidden away within the settings. If you pinch the home screen, go to the home screen settings, go to more, scroll down and go to show memory status. The good thing about switching this on is when you open backgrounding, Essentially, it gives you a visual of what's going on at your phone at any given time so that you can make an informed decision as to whether you should start closing things off in the background or maybe running some of these things up here. All right, this one is so important. And in fact, it probably should have been the first one. Check this out. Open your backgrounding. Go to manage apps at the top here. See the three little dots in the top right corner? Tap that and go to default apps. Set this up straight away as soon as you can. It's super important. So you can specify what your default launcher is if you wanna use a different launcher instead of the stock one. You can specify a specific app for messages. So if you wanna use WhatsApp instead of your standard message app, you can set your default browser, your camera app. So if you wanna use a third party app instead of the stock one, the gallery. So this is an important one. I know some of you out there will prefer to use Google Photos as opposed to the stock gallery. So definitely go through this list, work your way through, choose which apps you want to handle, which things by default. It doesn't mean you can never use the other ones, it just means it will default to that one when given the option. So the visuals on your device are important. For example, the backgrounds, the lock screen backgrounds, but also the always on display. And it's actually switched off by default out of the box here on the Xiaomi 12. So I do recommend you set it up and you can customize it in lots of ways, but I'll show you very quickly. Settings, always on display, switch on always on display. And then here you can use preset ones like this one I made earlier. <laughs> you can put words in there and color them and 
change the layout, change the text size, change the fonts and the spacing. You could even add date and time, battery notifications, all this kind of stuff to your custom lock screen. Or you can use one of the preset ones. And some of the preset ones are really nice. So these ones that have these circles with the shadow circles behind them, these are animated ones. I like these clocks, they look really cool. And the great thing about OLED screens is all the black areas of the screen aren't using any power. It's only the areas here that are using power on the always on display. So it's barely using any energy and you can set timeouts and stuff like that. So you see my one goes off pretty quickly, but you can change that as much as you want. So you can set the timer for that to be longer or shorter or whatever you want. All right, here's another setting within the same menu. Go to settings, go to always on display and lock screen, scroll to the bottom. And here we see launch camera in the other section. If you switch this on, a double push of the downward volume button will open the camera even on the lock screen. So the phone is locked, double push downwards, volume rocker, and it opens the camera. I think that's a good little shortcut to set up. There's also this one here, you can drag this across to open the camera from the home screen. But sometimes if you're wearing gloves or something like that, it might be easier to double push the volume rocker to open the camera. All right, tip number 10. This is a very important tip and it's an everyday usability tip and I definitely recommend you do this. So you probably already know this. If you swipe down top left corner, it brings up your notification shade. If you swipe down on the top right corner, it brings up your control panel. And this is what we wanna look at. This is important. And I noticed this when I got this out of the box the first time. This area, see the top eight toggles here. We can't see what they are by name. We can just see the icons. If we swipe down again, you can see what they actually are. So those first eight are very important. Those should be the ones you use the most. But out of the box, they're just completely random. And there's so many toggles in there, like more than you would ever need. So I do recommend you customize these. And to do that, just hit this little button here, top right corner, delete the ones you don't need, add the ones from the list at the bottom that you do need. And once you've done that, rearrange them in an order where the first eight are the ones you would use the most. I have to mute my phone quite often because of all the bloody notifications. So put that near the front, spring Google Pay out of there. Reverse wireless charging is a good one to have. So on the back of this phone, you can charge another phone or some earbuds. That's good to have. Airplane mode, NFC, location services, hotspot if I want to connect this phone's data to another device. Performance mode is a good one for gaming. It essentially focuses all the power to that one task that you're performing, whether that be gaming or something else. And then we've got Dolby Atmos sound as well, which honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna turn off because it just makes the phone sound better. Anyway, spend some time, customize your control panel, toggles. All right, tip number 11. This is something that I used to love on my Samsung devices and we do have it here on Xiaomi devices. It's not called the same thing though. Let me show you. Go to settings, go to notifications and control center, go to notification effects. So here we can customize how notifications appear on the lock screen. So we can pulse blue or red, and we also have starlight. So if your phone is locked and you receive a text message or something like that, it will show these animations. If your phone is face down, because it's a curved screen, you're gonna see that blue lighting up along the sides of the phone, which is a great little feature to have. Definitely set this up. This is a good little animation. All right, tip number 12. I've saved a special one for number 12. Go to settings, go to special features. And here we have none other than the special features. And check this one out, heart rate at the bottom. At any time, you can use the optical in-display fingerprint reader on this device to measure your heart rate. And, and I will say, making these videos can be quite stressful at times. So it's a nice little feature built into the phone. If you wanna keep tabs on your heart rate, you do have that at your disposal. So I just wanna say thank you for making it this far. Of course, I've saved some bonus tips for you guys, and I will be giving away the vouchers in a little bit as well. But check this next one out. Back into settings, back into special features. And here we have second space. So this feature right here is gonna be incredibly useful to anybody who has kids or someone who regularly lets other people use their phone. Because what this does is it creates a sort of second home screen that doesn't have access to all of the main stuff that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can create a login for that person. You can even scan their fingerprint to access the second space. When they do, like I said before, they do not have access to your stuff, but they can use the power of your phone. They could play games, watch movies, create documents even, take photos and all the usual stuff, 
but they cannot affect your files, photos, and private information. So let's say you've just bought yourself this nice shiny purple Xiaomi 12 device or another Xiaomi device. Someone might see you rocking this and might wanna take it from you. And if that happens, you might wanna call for backup. And there's an easy way to do that with these phones. So if we go to settings and then we go to safety and emergency, in here, we can set up emergency contact information. We can set up an emergency SOS feature. So by pushing the power button five times, we can automatically call 999, or we can key in a custom number, maybe to your local mafia or something like that. And then whenever you push the button five times, it will send an automatic message to that person or call to that person so they can hear what's going on and back you up if you're in trouble. So I do recommend you set this up not just for if you're getting robbed, but also if there's a medical emergency or something like that as well. All right, so if someone tries to steal your phone, you're covered, but what happens if you lose your phone? Well, Xiaomi have their own software built in to track your device, but I actually prefer this one from Google. It's called Google Find My Device. And the reason I like this one is because my earbuds and other Google devices are also linked to it, so I can search for all of my Google devices in one place. The Xiaomi one's very specific to Xiaomi devices. So I do recommend you set this up, especially if you've got a new phone, because if you lose it, this will help you find it. Definitely do that. All right, so here's another quick tip. You probably noticed right here at the center of the home screen is the security app. And this is a Xiaomi stock app. And it's the only stock app that I keep on the home screen for a reason, because it's very useful for optimizing your device with all these scans and all this kind of deep clean features. But there's also this dual app. So if you have two Instagram accounts or two TikTok accounts and you wanna keep them separate, you can actually have clones of apps and have two different accounts on the two separate apps. But what I wanna show you is this, the app lock. So app lock allows you to lock specific apps. So in order to access those apps, you have to key in your pin number or present your fingerprint or your pattern unlock. So you can lock specific stuff if it holds sensitive information, let's say a crypto app or something like that. All right, here's a little bonus trick for you guys. And some of you probably already know about this, but it's the Android Easter egg. So if we go to settings, we go to about phone and then here where it says the Android version, if we tap that, this clock pops up. If we set this clock to 12, 12 o'clock, we unlock the Easter egg. Now. At this point, it doesn't look like you can do much, but there is something that's happened here in the background that you might not know about. Check this out. Empty page here. Let's pinch to go to the widgets. And then here in the widgets, we have system UI. And we also have paint chips. And this is the one I wanna show you. So we've got one chip here. and we can expand it like this. And that just looks pretty cool. And it doesn't do much really, but you can share these colors with other people. Let's say I like this shade of blue here. I can tap that and I can send it as a message to people. I could tweet about it. I can save it in notes. I can send it via email to people and they can access that color code there for this color chip. And I think that's it, <laughs> there's not much else to it. If anyone knows anything else about these color chips, if there's anything cool going on here that I don't know about, let me know in the comments below. So thank you for making it to the end of the video. Two of these codes you see right here are real codes. Two of them are fake. And it is first come, first serve. So whoever redeems it first, please leave a comment to say that you won, just so everybody knows it was legit. And if you didn't win this time, don't worry too much. There will be more opportunities in the future. And just know this, it is first come, first serve. So if you see that I've just uploaded a new tips and tricks video, and you're the first one to make it to the end, you have much better odds of winning the vouchers. Anyway, appreciate you guys. If you got any value out of this at all, a thumbs up would make my day. A subscribe would make my month. And if you just did that, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you guys in the next one. So don't be late.